frequently think every now and then of the glorious fruit of the noble hen. Eggs! Eggs! E-double-G-S eggs! My knowledge of eggs is tremendously wide. I've eaten them boiled, I've eaten them fried, poached and shirred and deviled and scrambled, hommelets, schmommelets, coddled and frambled. I've eaten them beaten and swizzled and swuzzled, frizzled, gadizzled, bamboozled and fuzzled. I know every way that an egg can be guzzled. And thinking of eggs reminds me of Sam, whose favorite dish is green eggs and ham. I am Sam. Sam I am. That Sam I am, that Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. He does not like them, Sam I am. He doesn't like, he doesn't like green eggs and ham. Would you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. He doesn't like green eggs and ham. He doesn't like them. Would you like them in a house? Would you like them with a mouse? I would not like them in a house. I would not like them with a mouse. I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. Green eggs and ham. He doesn't like green eggs and ham. He doesn't like them. He doesn't like green eggs and ham. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a fox? <clears throat> no, not in a box. Not with a fox. <laughs> Not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. Yuck. I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Would you, could you, in a car, eat them, eat them, here they are. I would not, could not in a car. You may like them, you will see. You may like them in a tree. I would not, could not in a tree, not in a car. Now let me be. Not in a box, not with a fox, not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Sam, oh Sam, oh Sam I am. He doesn't want him, doesn't need him, wouldn't touch him, wouldn't eat him, wouldn't like him here or there. Or any, 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 anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Could you, would you, on a train? No, not on a train, not in a tree, not in a car. Sam, let me be. Not in a box with a box. Not with a mouse, not in a house, not here or there, not anywhere. In the dark? Here in the dark? Would you, could you, in the dark? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I would not, could not in the dark. <laughs> Could you? In the rain? I would not, could not in the rain. Not in the dark, not in a train, not in a car, not in a tree. I would not like them, Sam, you see.
Would you, could you, with a goat? Mm, I would not, could not, with a goat. I will not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. Would you, could you, on a boat? <laughs> I would not, would not on a boat. I will not, will not with a goat. Not in the rain, not on a train. like them so you say try them try them and you may try them and you may i say fam if you will let me be i will try them and you will see <laughs> Green eggs and ham. I do. I like them, Sam. I am. And I would eat them in a boat. And I would eat them with a goat. And I will eat them in the rain. And in the dark. And on a train. And in the car. And in a tree. They are so good. So good, you see. So I will eat them in a box. And I will eat them with a fox. <laughs> like green eggs and ham. Thank you. Thank you, Sam I am. Oh, at the edge of each ocean, you'll always find beaches. Beautiful, glorious, glorious beaches. When I meander on peacefulish beaches, I frequently find myself thinking of sneeches. Now the star-bellied sneeches had bellies with stars. But the plain-bellied sneeches had none upon Mars. No stars on their bellies. No stars upon Mars. Now those stars weren't so big. They were really quite small. You would think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star-bellied sneeches would brag. We're the best kind of sneech on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. They'd have nothing to do with a plain belly sort. Ronald, remember, when you are out walking, you walk past a sneech of that type without talking. Keep your snoot in the air and remember to snort. We have no truck whatever with the plain bellied sort. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon Mars. Yeah, yeah, your belly's got no stars. Yeah, yeah, your belly's got no stars. Twink, twink, twinkle, twinkle, lovely little star. Twink, twink, twink. 
twinkle, twinkle, stupid little star. If there's one upon your tummy, that's just yummy, you're my chummy. If there isn't, you're a crummy, slummy, gummy, bummy, dummy. That applies likewise to daddy and your mummy. Stupid little star. When the Starbelly Sneeches had Frankfurter roasts or picnics or parties or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly Sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. From the heights of Muba Muba to the gullies of Gazoo, there is nobody else who has one. We're the favorite few who do. And so a toast, raise your marshmallow stick. A toast, raise your good fellow stick. And toast the glorious gimmicky that makes us what we are. Sound off and let the welcome ring. In praise of our exclusive thing. A toast, raise your marshmallow stick. A toast, raise your good fellow stick. A toast to your belly star. They kept them away, never let them come near. That's how they treated them year after year. They got snubbed, they got snooted, their bottoms got booted, while the star-bellied Sneetches all taunted and hooted. They just are not suited. No stars, stars upon bars. Then one day, it seems, while the plain-bellied Sneetchers were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there, wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger approached in the strangest of cars. My friends, I have seen they've been treating you mean. My name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean. I know precisely why you are so unhappy, and that I can fix. I'm the fix-it-up chappy. Prices are low, and I work with great speed, and my 100% guaranteed. By my new patent process of polar potoxis, of the inner subnuclear noose bomb nogoxis, you'll get a star like the star back for the mere paltry payment of uh, $3 each. A star? Here? It's my friend, there. And the first to go through gets the trip at half fare. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It works! Yeah! It works! It works! upon bars and we over here we got stars upon ours we got them all so we got them too for every little bitty bit as goody good as you now we're socially acceptable toast you'll have to send us invitations to your frankfurter roast stars stars bless our lucky stars all the speeches on the beaches now got stars upon bars Ladies and gentlemen, we are faced with a most awkward dilemma. We're the true star bellies, we had them first. We're still the best sneeches, and they're still the worst. Yeah! But how are we going to prove it? Which is which? I can't tell us apart. Let me through, excuse me, step aside, please. Thank you. You don't know me, my friends, but calm down if you can. I'm here to help the original star belly clan. Those upstarts, it's true, uh, now have stars just like you. But follow me, my friends, and you know what I'll do. I'll make you again the best sneeches on the beaches. And all it will cost you is uh, 
$10 each. <laughs> Belly stars, my dear friends, are no longer in style. And I'll have yours off in a very short while in my wondrous machine which eradicates stars. Then you won't look like sneetches who have them on bars. Eradicates these? Eradicates these with the greatest of ease, uh, provided you pay your ten bucks, if you please. Here's ten for the boy and ten for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How distinctive. How exclusive. Now we know who is who, and there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. The old-fashioned custom of walking about. With stars on your belly is O-U-T, out. Abdominal stars we cannot abide. Abdominal stars are abominable. Then, of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star-off machine. Thank you. Thank you. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things really got into a horrible mess. <laughs> All the rest of that day, on those wild, screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines they raced round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money. They kept running through until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one or that one was this one or which one was what one or what one was who. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chap packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove his car up the beach. <laughs> they never will learn. No, you can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong. I am happy to say that the sneeches got really quite smart on that day. That day they decided that sneeches are sneeches, and no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day, all the Sneetches forgot about stars, and whether they had one or not upon the A toast, raise your marshmallow stick. A toast, raise your good fellow stick. A toast to the silly gimmick kick that we have here and there. Sound off and let the welkin ring. So what do your star spangled thing? A toast, raise your marshmallow stick. A toast. Raise your good fellow stick and poo 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 to your belly star. Oh, beyond the last mountain, the very last mountain, beyond the last Zinnica Zanica tree. 
beyond the last woomph bush, the very last woomph bush. There is a vacuous vacant prairie, the prairie of Prax and the tale of the Zacks. One day, making tracks in the prairie of Prax, came a north-going Zacks, a north-going Zacks, and a south-going Zacks. A north-going Zacks, and a south-going Zacks. And it happened that both of them came to a place where they bumped. There they stood, foot to foot, face to face. Look here now, the north-going Zack said. Hey, say, you are blocking my path. You are right in my way. I'm a north-going Zax, and I always go north. Get out of my way now and let me go forth. Who's in whose way? Snapped the south-going Zax. I always go south, making south-going tracks. So you're in my way. And I ask you to move and let me go south in my south-going groove. Then the north-going Zack said with north-going pride, I never have taken a step to one side, and I'll prove to you that I won't change my ways if I have to keep standing here 59 days. And I'll prove to you, yelled the south-going Zack, that I can stand here in the prairie of Prax for 59 years. For I live by a rule that I learned as a boy back in south-going school. Never budge, that's my rule. Never budge in the least, not an inch to the west, not an inch to the east. I'll stay here not budging, I can and I will, if it makes you and me and the whole world stand still. Of course, the world didn't stand still. The world grew. In a couple of years, the new highway came through, and they built it right over those two stubborn Zacks and left them there, standing unbudged in their tracks. <laughs> 